Welcome back to the Retire Young Radio Show. I am your host, Joshua David, having some fun in the studio with my great friend and my great pal, Mr. Al Connickson. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Retire Young Podcast on Apple Podcast, iHeartRadio, and Spotify. Be sure to leave us a comment on different topics you'd like to hear next. So, Al, as we get into this last segment, I do want to continue this discussion on retirement because there's so many listeners that want to build retirements. They want to understand how that works, but also cre- uh, maintain them, but also manage them themselves. And it all comes down to confidence. A lot of people, you know, that people that the people that do have retirements feel a little, I guess, uneasy about taking over their own money because they they feel, oh, I've, I don't know how to do that. Well, of course, you don't know right now. That's why there's techniques and there's there's uh, concepts and different skills that us as the public can utilize the same ones that the smart money is using. So let's continue this discussion on retirement, retirement accounts, and really let's, let's talk about how you can start to self-direct because a lot of people just don't know the first thing to do is it is you mentioned earlier um, you can start a, an IRA. How does how does that really work though? Because a lot of people just don't know. Right. Well, and, and we can give you advice on that too. We can help you kind of understand what the steps are. But basically, it's just opening an account at a brokerage firm, uh, an IRA. Uh, whether you can do a Roth or a, or a traditional IRA, if you are no longer working and you have money in a four hundred one k or four hundred three b, you can roll that into this IRA also. But it's very it's easy to set up. It's just basically you know filling out a few things on a on a form. You can do it online, transferring some assets to those accounts, and then the the number of choices you have is unbelievable. I mean, the, you, if you want to trade mutual funds, you can. Those are available. Individual stocks are available. You can trade futures. You can trade the foreign exchange market. You can trade options in those accounts. You can have protection, and this is a, really a, a significant part of going into retirement. That's actually the number one thing is safety of principle, protecting what you have worked so hard for, uh, because you you don't get a do-over. When you're 70, 80 years old, uh, there are not a whole lot of career type positions that are available to you. So safety of principle is number one. But then also, what about this? What about growing the capital that you have, continuing the buildup of your, uh, the money you have in retirement, instead of just drawing it down? And you do that in a couple of ways. Number one, you learn how to use it as a way of generating additional cash instead of just pulling it out. Now, you you may have to take required minimum distributions. But yeah, there's a certain age for that. I believe sure. it's 70. And it, it went they, up, actually, just, didn't it? It went up. I think it's 72 now. Yeah. But uh, so that's that's a requirement you have to take. But a lot of people take more than that because they're just living off of whatever that pile of money is that's in that uh, employer-sponsored retirement plan. Well, what our students like to do is, in addition to the retri- required minimum distributions, just build ca- build that portfolio up to the point where it is providing cash for you. And there are strategies that we teach that uh, that show you how to do that. And then the growth of the capital. So why not make that that pile of money that you have there, have it grow. So maybe you want to pass on something down to your kids or your grandkids, or maybe there's a charity that uh, that you'd like to participate in. Uh, but that's what's going to give you confidence, knowing that you're protected, number one, knowing that you have a source of, of cash when you need it from the accounts that you have built up, knowing that you can continue to grow that. Those are the three really important components. And and it all starts with a plan, the proper plan that uh, y- the earlier you can start, the better. But you, it's never too late to do that. And it's it's very much like a, a road map. Uh, and the plan is going to be different for everybody because everybody has a different situation where you're starting and where you want to be may be different than than your neighbor. Uh, it's a lot like the uh, the GPS systems that we have now. There are some people that if they're going to go on a trip, they can't even leave their driveway until their GPS system is turned on. A lot of people don't know where, which way north, south, yeah, east, and west that, is. That's right. You don't <laughs> you don't have to know that anymore because of those those uh, magic GPS systems. But it's the same thing in, in your finances. You need to know where you want to go and the best way to get there. How do you ch- switch from where you are to where you, you want to be? And that strategy, that plan, uh, in, in addition to you know, identifying where you want to go, what your goals are, it should include that strategy, a strategy that is that foundational strategy that shows you how to just follow what Wall Street's doing. And it, it's it, as, let me say, simple. It, it's not... It's not easy, but it can be more simple if you understand why price changes 
and you learn how to identify where that's going to happen on a price chart. It's like reading, like a radiologist reading an x-ray. That's what we teach our students, how to look at a price chart, how to identify in that price chart where institutional activity will take place. Yeah, and a lot of people just make sometimes wrong decisions, and they they make wrong decisions because they don't understand those different techniques and concepts. But there's ways that you talk about in these investing classes of eliminating those those uh, wrong decisions. You also talk about how these markets really function, uh, especially you do with the roadmap, having a plan. That's probably the number one thing is people don't have a plan. So once you have a plan, then you follow that plan. Al, since we're on the topic of GPS and driving, I want to talk about, you know, you were talking about earlier the up down, up and down markets. Right. So in GPS, you're going to get, have a location or a destination. You can get there with drive. But there mm-hmm. may be times you need to park. There may be times that you need to go in reverse. Right. Right. So in retirement accounts, there is ways and concepts to participate in down markets, especially in your retirement account. But there's a number one thing I want to talk about here insurance. Mm-hmm. There, people want to insure their portfolio to give them more confidence in their future, right? So let's talk about options and how how you may use insurance within the options market to protect what you have. Right. Options really were initially developed as a protective vehicle because these, in, these institutions have such huge amounts of money in their positions. They have to have a way of protecting it. And assets really or options really are, are one of the things that they use. Uh, options can be used. We, we call it an insurance policy, a financial insurance policy, and we'll show you how to do that. Uh, you know, and, and the reason that that's so important, is, let's just go back to the year 2008. We have a lot of students that come in that retired in the year 2007. And then in the end of 2007 into 2008, all through 2008 into the beginning of 2009, we went through a 57% market correction. Think about the impact of that on you if you retire in, in the first year that you retire or maybe even the second year you retire, 30, 40, 50, 60 percent of what you have worked for is gone. That's living half a lifestyle. It, that's exactly right. And unfortunately, a lot of the students that we have that, that did that, that retired in the year 2007, they ended up wiping out everything they had in their retirement plans during that market drawdown just to pay the bills and, and to live. And then they couldn't participate in the greatest bull market we've ever seen. That's exactly right. And and that is is truly sad to see because there are a lot of people that were just sitting on the sidelines wishing that they hadn't lost money, wishing that they had something to invest, or maybe were afraid to get back in because they did go through that drawdown and the pain was too great and they just didn't get back in. Whatever the reason, if if there was a way to protect your assets, to have an insurance policy on your portfolio, wouldn't that make a difference or couldn't that make a difference for you? And that's that safety of principle that we talk about. That should be part of your investment world from day one. For every dollar that you are investing, you want to make sure that you are you understand that there's risk and you understand that there's ways of managing that. But especially in retirement, that is the number one goal is to make sure what you have worked so hard for stays with you and doesn't end up in somebody else's account. That's right. Now, think about this. We insure everything. We insure our homes, our cars, ourselves, our bodies. Now, if you're listening right now, do you have insurance on your portfolio? And there's probably crickets right now because it's so quiet. Mm -hmm. Nobody knows how to do that. There is ways to do that. And you really dissect that in these different techniques and these these different concepts on how to insure your portfolio in retirement. Al, we've had a you know had a little bit of time off with uh, Labor Day the past couple of weeks here, mm-hmm. and uh, you've helped a lot of people become more comfortable and confident. A lot of that comes from your words of wisdom. Let's hear them today. Well, you know what, Josh? There are hundreds of different approaches and ideas. One goal should be to decide on a specific approach or strategy that fits you. And that may be totally different than the person that's uh, maybe standing or sitting next to you. Identify your niche and then get good at it. Master it. There is not one approach that is best for everyone, but there may be one that is best for you specifically. And it all comes down to having those three C's. More confidence in your investing. More consistency. Hopefully that can give you better choices. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Retire Young Podcast on Apple Podcast, iHeartRadio, and Spotify. Next week, we got another big show, more income talk about how the smart money is doing that, retirement, how that works. Until next week with the Retire Young Radio Show, retire young, my friends.